Welcome to the Clear to Send podcast, a podcast about wireless engineering, where we educate you on Wi-Fi technology, talk about design tips, troubleshooting, interviews, and the tools. Here are your hosts, Roel and Francois. Today's show is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com slash clear to send and browse the fantastic selection of audio programs. Download a title free and start listening. It's that easy. Again, go to audibletrial.com slash clear to send. Hi, guys, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Clear to Send show. This is episode number 135. And uh, this week we'll be talking about uh, Wi-Fi authentication types and Wi-Fi encryption encryption types. Sorry. And um, so I'm here with Roel this week. Hi, Roel. How are you? Hello, Francois. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so right before we talk about, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, Wi-Fi security, uh, we just want to remind you guys that the Mobility Field Day is coming up uh, pretty soon in about uh, less than a month. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be between September 12th and September 14th. So this is going to be the third version of Mobility Field Day. Um, and you can actually follow the event live on YouTube. Uh, so if you want to uh, know more about the, the event, you can go on the website, the Tech Field Day uh, website. You should be able to find all the useful information. And uh, actually, Rowell, you'll be attending this event. Yeah, that's right. I'll be there. It's in, in, in my, t- home t- my town here in uh, San Jose. It's going to be in Santa Clara. I don't know where exactly yet, but uh, we're going to be seeing all the vendors. So it's going to be a pretty good event. I'll be a delegate there along with uh, a lot of other people that you may know of. So I think it'll be a great event to tune into. Exactly. And I love the fact that it's uh, it's actually live and you can follow the event on YouTube and then interact with the uh, the crew on Twitter. Um, so you can actually ask your question on Twitter and someone relates the questions to the uh, to the presenter. So it's actually a quite interactive and live event. And if you have the opportunity to follow uh, the event, it's uh, it's very interesting. Yep. Um, and you can always rewatch the videos afterwards on YouTube if you uh, didn't catch everything or if you didn't have time to to attend. Yeah, don't worry about watching it live. If you can't, they'll post the videos up fairly fairly quickly. And also, don't worry about you know not uh, knowing a lot about Wi-Fi. You can always uh, rewatch it, or you you will always learn something uh, regardless. Um, but I remember like a few years back watching these events and ve- being very early in the in the Wi-Fi, and uh, I couldn't I, I actually didn't understand everything, but uh, I was always learning something, and and um, and so it was always interesting to me. Um, plus, you get introduced to some of the uh, you know Wi-Fi experts uh, that are active on Twitter and, and social media, so you can actually put a, a face on on their Twitter handle. So it's pretty nice. <clears throat> All right. So right before we talk about Wi-Fi security, uh, this week we have the ten uh, question interview with Dave Benham. So we met Dave at the um, at the Cisco Live this year. Uh, so here is the ten question interview with Dave Benham. What's your name? Dave Benham. Where do you live? Uh, Detroit. Where were you born? Gross Point, Michigan. What's special about that place? Uh, I don't know. It's nice. There's a beach and I mean, there's water and all that. Not really a beach, but there's water. Uh, what's your job? I'm the mobility practice director for uh, Presidio. Um, what, would, what would you be doing if you were not doing Wi-Fi? Probably be a welder. Uh, what could you give a 40 minutes presentation on with absolutely no preparation? Uh, RRM, Wi-Fi design, something like that. Uh, what is something you think everyone should do at least once in their life? Give a 40 minute presentation about something <laughs> with without any preparation. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think your job will look like in 10 years? Oh man, I don't know. I'm going to be pretty decrepit by then, so I hope it doesn't involve a lot of walking. 
Thank you, Dave. <laughs> yeah, thank you. That was a funny one. Yeah, he's pretty funny, <laughs> right? Yeah, he's he, he, he's a quick thinker, right? <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's interesting that he'd be a welder. He does look like one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's a very good engineer, though. Yes, he is. He's a very uh, very sharp dude. He's very cool and fun to talk to you if you ever get a chance. And I remember I hung out with him last year at uh, the last Cisco Live, and yeah, I recommend. It. He seems quiet, but you know when you when you really speak with with him, he's very cool and understanding and down to earth. Yeah, yeah. And he, he knows a lot about Wi Fi too. So if you ask him some Wi Fi questions, he's he'll be um, happy to help. Um, all right. So let's talk about Wi Fi uh, security a little bit here. We wanted to touch uh, upon some, some basics uh, around Wi Fi security. Uh, we wanted to talk about uh, the different Wi-Fi authentication types that are used in uh, modern Wi-Fi network and also talk about the different uh, encryption types that are used uh, nowadays. Um, so we try to break it down in, in, you know, in a simple manner um, so it's, it's easier to, to, uh, to understand. Uh, it, can, it can become a little bit overwhelming at first, but uh, it's actually pretty simple if you just uh, think about it. Um, so let's start by talking about the different Wi-Fi authentication types. And uh, really, there is only three Wi-Fi authentication types uh, used nowadays. You have the open, the pre-shared key, and the 802.1x authentication. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's let's start by talking about the open authentication. The easiest one. <laughs> the easiest one, yeah. Open authentication pretty pretty much means that there's no authentication, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a free for all. <laughs> yeah, so open authentication, uh, the device connects to the Wi-Fi network. There's no authentication. It's just a simple two-way packet exchange, and nothing, it's nothing more. It's supposed to be the easiest way, and it's supposed to be less friction. But oftentimes, if it's at the airport or the hotel, you're probably going to get hit with a splash page. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that would be the, um, uh, I guess here we're focusing on the 802.11 authentications. Uh, afterwards, you can always have a you know, captive portal after the, uh, the, the association process. Uh, but yeah, usually it's uh, the open authentication is used for any public, uh, you know, networks, Wi-Fi networks. So we're thinking about airport. Um, mm -hmm. coffee shops, restaurants, hotels, uh, museums, uh, all these places, they usually have an open authentication. And then afterwards, sometimes they add a captive portal and then you'll mm -hmm. go, you'll go through captive portal. Sometimes they just, um, they just ask you to read the, uh, or to agree. I shouldn't say read, but <laughs> they ask yeah, you to agree to, to the, the terms. terms. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of people <laughs> read the terms. Um, you mean you don't read those every single time, Francois? Um, <laughs> no, I will admit. <laughs> um, and sometimes they, add, they give you another, you know, username, password, or they ask you to put your email, so stuff like that. Uh, but mm -hmm. it, uh, on the, you know, on the Wi-Fi standpoint, 802.11 packet exchange, uh, it's just a, a simple two-way packet exchange and you're, you're, you considered authenticated. So yep. that's just the easiest way to do it uh, nowadays. Um, and obviously it's not the most secure way of doing things because ev everyone can just connect. Yeah, just quickly get joining the network and that's it. Exactly, yeah. Um, so yeah, just so you guys are aware, when you're using the Wi-Fi, the airport or the restaurant, uh, the hotel most of the time, you're gonna be um, using open authentication. So that's the first type. Second type of authentication is uh, the pre-shared key, PSK. Yep. Right? The most widely used method. Yeah, widely used. So this is typically the one where when you connect to a Wi-Fi network, they ask you for a password, you put the password in, and then if you have the right password, you're authenticated. You can connect to the Wi-Fi network. Uh, so it's like, well, like you said, it's widely used. We use that at home. Uh, we use it for small... Uh, some small deployments, some, um, you know, sometimes some, you know, SMBs. Um, and also it's sometimes used when we have to support devices that don't support the third type of authentication that we'll be talking about, the 802.1x authentication. Some devices don't support this more advanced 
uh, method of authentication. So we'll have to rely on pre-shared key to bring those devices onto the Wi-Fi network. Um, the advantage of pre-shared key is that it's very easy to set up, right? You just need to configure your Wi-Fi network, your SSID, um, uh, with a with the password, with the pre-shared key, and then you're pretty much set. You don't need an, an additional pieces of equipment uh, to do to perform the authentication. Um, one of the disadvantage of PSK, though, is that if the you know if the pre-shared key is too weak or too small, you could be subject to dictionary attacks, and some someone can break into your network. Yeah, and these are some of the attacks that we just recently heard about this year. Um, so use a much stronger pre-shared key to try to mitigate some of those attacks. And and also you may want to change that password, you know, regularly, maybe once a year. Although that becomes a management nightmare if you're using it in a business and you have hundreds or not even just hundreds of devices, as little as, you know, a couple of devices. It could be challenging to change those passwords, especially if you miss a couple of devices and they're not working anymore. Yeah, and I think recently on Twitter, um, um, the, we had a, a Wi-Fi queue around changing your, your pre-shared keys. Um, and so we had some interesting Nobody discussion there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like you said, the best practice will, will be, you know, let's change the pre-shared key once in a while. But if you change the pre-shared key, like you said, you have you know, have to reconfigure all your, your devices. So it, it becomes a nightmare. So most of the people don't change the pressure yeah. key, right? Um, but that see if you if you don't change the pressure key, you need something strong enough, so it's it's secure enough, right? So right. W- what does it mean? You know, uh, what what does a strong password mean? Right. Um, Most people resort to an easy um, an easy pre-shared key password because that has to be shared amongst a lot of people, and no one wants to type in complex passwords onto their mobile phone, for example. Yeah. Well, something that's pretty robust against dictionary attacks, it's long passwords. So you can always make up a sentence as a password, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, a phrase. Yeah. Like the clear, the clear to send podcast is awesome. And that's your password. Everyone will remember. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone should use that password. <laughs> yeah. So appreciate care. It's also known as um, WPA personal or WPA2 personal. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is usually what you will select when you configure your equipment. They are, they'll have a little drop down menu and they'll have something called WPA personal or something, depending on the vendors. So you might have seen that those terms as well. Uh, and that refers to the personal, refers to the pre shared key authentication. Okay. All right. So we talked about open authentication, we talked about pre shared key. Let's now talk about the third type and, and strongest type of authentication, which is 802.1x. Um, so 802.1x, and when you write 802.1x, x has to be capital. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picky with that, but... Um, <clears throat> so the, the, the 802.1x is pretty much a framework um, which defines the authentication. Uh, and then in the framework, you have a supplicant, which is pretty much the device I wants to connect. Mm-hmm. You have the authenticator, and you have the authentication server. Uh, in the in the Wi-Fi setup, um, the authenticator is usually the AP or the controller, and the authentication server is usually a Radius server. Um, and so, in order to have the edu 2.1x authentication, um, it, you know, ready and and um, available, you will need an, a, a Radius server. Right? So it's, it's usually an additional piece of equipment. Um, and so that's why the 802.1x authentication is usually used in the enterprise environment where you already have those type of servers available. You can quickly, you know, set up a radio server in your infrastructure. Um, and, um, the, the advantage of having a, a dedicated authentication server is that you can have this 802.1x authentication, which is the most ro- more robust authentication. Um, and on top of this 802.1x authentication, you're going to be using different EAP method to authenticate the user. Mm-hmm. Um, I should say authentication, authenticate the user or the device or both, depending on your, your setup. Your setup. Um, and then the EAP method is going to define 
really what method is used to authenticate the device. Is it going to be a, cer a digital certificate? Is it going to be credentials? Is it going to be a, you know, a SIM card? And so on. So this, the, the IP method that you, you'll be using will define how the uh, ultimate device, the supplicant, will authenticate itself to the Wi-Fi network. Um, do you have anything to add, Rowell? No, no, I got nothing. I think you pretty much defined it there. <laughs> um, another name for 802.1x authentication that you you might see is WPA Enterprise or WPA2 Enterprise. Uh, so the enterprise there defines the 802.1x authentication. Uh, in the second you know, segment of this podcast, we'll talk about encryption and we'll, we'll explain the difference between WPA and WPA2. Mm -hmm. Uh, it relies in the encryption. All right, so we talked about the three main type of authentication that are used nowadays on, on, on our Wi-Fi networks. The yep. open, which is usually used for public network, uh, airport, restaurants, and so on. The pre-shared key, uh, which is used for you know home, any home network, small network, small businesses. Yeah. Um, and then the third one, which is 802.1x, which is used for enterprise networks. Um, Right before we talk about um, encryption, let's talk about the upcoming way um, of the, uh, the upcoming authentication types that might be introduced in our Wi-Fi networks in the in the near future. Um, yeah, these ones are coming up pretty soon, right? Because of the announcement by the Wi-Fi Alliance, and this is already in the standard. You got your uh, SAE or S simultaneous authentication of equals, and this changes uh, or makes changes, <clears throat> excuse me, to the four way handshake. And this is to further protect our networks from those attacks that, that came out this year with like crack and um, cracking that uh, one of the EPOL keyframes. So the uh, simultaneous authentication of equals or SAE that should be coming up fairly soon with, with our vendors, hopefully. And because, I believe uh, that further protects us. Yeah, I believe with SE, even if you retrieve the the past the pre-shared key, you're not able to decrypt the uh, the past conversations. Right. Yeah, because of the key uh, that changes per I think session. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but yeah, it's uh, even if they were to compromise that key somehow, they can't read the previous uh, conversations or frames that that were already transferred or transmitted. So that's one type, ACE, and then the second one is uh, called DPP, Device Provisioning Protocol. And um, I don't know if you guys remember WPS. Uh, it's kind of like the new WPS where you'll be able to authenticate device uh, without necessarily a, a password. So you could use a QR code or NFC tag. And this is more aimed for like, you know, easy way of it's the easier way to authenticate device into your network. Yeah. Um, a lot of IoT devices that don't have any screens, for example, and you need to connect them to the wireless network because the BPS is very insecure. And so device provisioning protocol will will make that much uh, that process much more secure using uh, uh, better methods. And uh, I, I've written something up about it that hasn't been published yet, but hopefully when that gets published, we can add that to the show notes here. I think it would be great for even you know your house. Uh, you know, you, you you buy a new device. You just scan the QR code on your on your on your AP or one you put on your fridge or whatever. Or even if you have a guest over, um, mm -hmm. even in your hotel, they could be they could put QR codes, you know, in the rooms yeah. or whatever. I don't know. It's it's going to be much more convenient for um, more than IoT devices, I believe. Hopefully, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Our show is brought to you by Audible. Did you know you can ask Alexa to read a book to you? I have an Alexa dot in my house and I had my favorite book being read to me, Ready Player One. It was really awesome because audio makes great audiobooks, whether you like to listen to books to get your mind somewhere else or whether you like to learn. Sometimes I like to read biographies. I've been an Audible listener for over a year and I absolutely love it for my commute. You will too, because the selection on Audible is phenomenal. It seems like every book that comes out in print is also in Audible. 
So for you guys, you can go to audibletrial.com slash clear to send and you can get a book for free right now. Download it and start listening within a few seconds. So again, that's a free book for you guys. Download it at audibletrial.com slash clear to send. Let's now move on to the Wi-Fi encryptions. So the encryption is pretty much, um, you know, happening. Um, There's also different type of encryptions. Uh, What I wanted to mention here is the the encryption is only, uh, you know, if you take the different Wi-Fi frames, um, only the payload of data frames will be encrypted um, for the most part. If you're using uh, a little bit more advanced authentication uh, 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 techniques. Uh, some of the management frames might be encrypted as well. Uh, but to keep it sim- simple, just uh, just the payload of the man- of the data frames will be encrypted. So in Wi-Fi, we have three different type of frames: management, control, data, right? And then uh, when we talk about the encryption, we'll we'll focus on the payload of the data frame. Okay, everything else is not encrypted. If you just capture the the air, you'll just see everything. You'll see all the headers and everything. Um, So three different type of encryptions. Uh, First one is none. So so pretty much no encryption. Second one is TKeep. And the third one is CCMP AES, right? Uh, So the first one is, is none. So this is where you don't have any encryptions. Uh, so when don't we have any encryptions, Roel? It sounds weird, no? Oh yeah, it's it, obviously if you're using an open network, there's no encryption there, <laughs> and you're relying on your applications to encrypt your traffic, uh, whatever you, whatever application you're using. Hopefully, the applications you use are encrypting everything you're doing, but we can't fully rely on that every single time. So none means it's just an open authentication and you're kind of vulnerable there. Yeah, you don't have any layer two uh, encryptions. So like you said, you have to rely on your, you know, SSL encryptions or, you know, the best practice is to use a VPN um, Mm -hmm. um, when when connecting to open networks, open Wi-Fi networks. So if you go to Starbucks, you connect to the Wi-Fi and then you start up your VPN. So everything that goes through the air is is encrypted. to you know, to overcome this, this, um, this, 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 I would say this openness. Uh, we have the OWE upcoming, <clears throat> which is the opportunistic wireless encryption, and which will offer some type of encryption on open, authenticated network. Yeah, I, and I'm really interested in this one and to see how it works. It it really changes the, um, uh, yeah it because we use open networks so much that we need to somehow encrypt that traffic and OWE will will do this differently it's going to change the way the 80211 like authentication and association how that occurs but the way it works it will create keys um, between the client and the AP whatever your whichever AP you're connecting to and it'll do that dynamically and when when we finally see this come out I think it'll be much better than just using an open network without any encryption. And it's not a full method of protection, but it's it's better than no encryption. Exactly. And, you know, most people don't know that when they're using the Wi-Fi at, at, uh, at the coffee shop, it's nothing is encrypted, mm-hmm. right? So, and that for, to us, it's crazy. And probably if you tell everyone in the world, they will be like, what? So... So yeah, like you said, it's a, it's a very interesting uh, technology. We'll see how it goes. <clears throat> so that's the first type of encryption, none. Second one is TKIP. Um, TKIP is, um, was introduced back in the days, I think in 2004. Yeah, very uh, early on. It, yeah. Um, no, let me see. No, earlier than that. 2002. <laughs> uh, it got introduced in 2002 and the goal of, of TKIP was to patch a web, right? Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, we need to patch web because we need, we know web is, is not good. We need to patch it. Um, uh, but TKIP was never intended to be like a, uh, you know, a long-term solution. It was always intended to be like a, um, a bandit solution waiting for better yeah. encryptions. Um, so 
it's like, you know, t- uh, this saying in IT, uh, there's nothing temporal or temporal is long-term, whatever. I don't, I don't know exactly the same, yeah, but it's, uh, in, in, in my world, it's, uh, if it's going to be temporary, it's probably going to be permanent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So <laughs> it's kind of like what happened with TKIP. So it was, it was supposed to be temporal in 2002 and today is what, yeah. 2018 and, yeah. and you can still see it in some networks. Yeah, so. you know, 10 years later, you're going to say, hey, so let's talk about that temporary installation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, so it's um, it's actually, if you look at the um, deeper into the the, the, the uh, encryption algorithm and how it works, it's just a beefier web. Um, <laughs> so it's using the same cipher suite, the RC4, the Rivas cipher, uh, cipher suite, and it's uh, it's been compromised um, in the past, so it's actually deprecated, dep- deprecated okay. right now. So this means that you shouldn't use DKIP yeah, if you can. Use it, um, but there's still devices that that use it. I know there. I mean, yeah. this is why this this encryption type is still around because there are still a lot of devices that that use this, and not the 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 more better and improved version of encryption. And I think yes. that's where we need to push vendors to you know stop stop supporting old encryption and start updating devices to support the new one. But sometimes that means upgrading the devices as well. Exactly. So the devices in this case is more the limitation, and this is exactly why, why we still have to keep around. Um, and sometimes you know on some devices the life cycle would be like three four years, uh, but on on other devices the life cycle might be ten years. Right. So before you get rid of a TKIP device, it might take a little while. Um, yeah, exactly. I'm not blaming RF scanners right now. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> another limitation with uh, TKIP that I think is worth mentioning here is that you're limited uh, to 54 megabits per second in terms of data rates. Um, so, you know, in modern networks, AC networks, 54 megabits per second is considered pretty slow compared to what, you, do, you know, the speed you could get. Um, so... Um, so that's TKIP. So that's the second one. First one, none. Second one is TKIP. And the third one is uh, CCMP AES. Yep. And this is what you should be using. And that stands for counter mode <clears throat> with cipher blockchaining message authentication code. <laughs> Protocol. <laughs> that's a pretty long acronym. Using AES. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's using AES, uh, which is pretty much the you know the the standard now for encryption, um, not only for Wi-Fi but for any other uh, you know technologies. Um, so it's it's a much uh, stronger uh, encryption types. Uh, the AES encryption has not been. Uh, um, um, compromised. Crack, compromised at this point, I think. Uh, to my knowledge, so um, so it's a good thing for us, and um, and it, it's really what you should use nowadays in your network. Um, so let's talk about the difference between WPA and WPA2. Uh, so the the difference between WPA and WPA2 is really the type of encryption you'll be using. So yes. with with WPA you'll be using TKIP, and with WPA2 you'll be using CCMP AES. Um, yeah, that's a requirement there for WPA2. Yeah, it's it's a very it's a very brief summary of what it is. Um, with WPA2, you could o- also use TKIP and AES at the same time, like a hybrid version, support both for backward mm-hmm. compatibility uh, purposes. But for the most part, if you see WPA2, it means AES, uh, CCMP AES. If you see WPA, it means uh, TKIP. Yeah, and if you're doing some sort of frame capture, you could you could see this within the uh, beacon frames and uh, the association frames to see what kind of encryption is supported and and being used. Yeah, it's in the RC RSN. Uh, it's in the RSN uh, information element. All right. Yeah. So um, I guess one funny story we can mention at this point is uh, related to TKIP. Uh, I think a two two years or three years ago, uh, TKIP got you know uh, deprecated from uh, from the the industry. I guess from the standards. So some some vendors started to um, remove the TKIP option from their uh, configuration 
uh, interface and um, and they had to put it back because some customers still had some TKIP equipment and couldn't configure new networks. So they're like, oh, I have an issue here. I can't configure my network and I cannot have my device connecting. So <laughs> you guys going to have to put the TKIP option back. Um, and so they had to and put it. So that's the, why we still have it. <laughs> and that's why we still have it. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. Um, what, what, why don't you tell everyone about this resource you have, Francois, about Wi-Fi security and the timelines? Yeah, so I have a little. Um, I created it um, maybe a couple of years back. Can't rem- can remember uh, exactly, but it, I pretty much created like a Wi-Fi security timeline where I put the different uh, cipher suits, the different standards from the IEEE, the different standards from um, the Wi-Fi Alliance. Re- everything related to Wi-Fi security on the timeline, mm-hmm. so you can kind of see which one got introduced before the next one, and and, and so on. Um, and yeah, I, it's I'm really guessing I should um, I should update it this year with the introduction of WPA three and and the new stuff we just talked about in this episode. Yeah, you're gonna um, have to update yeah, that fairly yeah. soon. <laughs> And and a, a, a good piece of information as well on the on the article is a table that um, just details all the different Wi-Fi mm-hmm. standards and protocol. So if you want to get the exact name for the acronyms, especially the CCMP <laughs> counter mode yeah. with cipher block chaining message authentication code <laughs> protocol. <laughs> with if, if you are if you're studying for for your CWSP, it's perfect. Yeah, so we'll link to that in the show notes over at cleardescend.net slash 135. It's a really nice graphic that Francois put together. So I highly recommend checking that out and printing it out for your studies. Cool. Anything else you want to mention, Francois, on this episode? No, um, no, uh, that's pretty much pretty much it. If you want to share this episode with anyone uh, that would be interested new in Wi-Fi, uh, learning more about Wi-Fi security. I even received another a question uh, by email this week and the person was asking me uh, asking me a Wi-Fi security question. <coughs> and nice. I, to- I told the person, uh, tune in to the next Kirchner episode because <laughs> we're going to be talking about, <laughs> tease them, <huh? laughs> about it. So uh, I think it's nice. It's a nice introduction to Wi-Fi security. Um, of course, it's not everything. Yeah, there's right? a lot if you more want to, to talk more. about. We're just, we're just scratching the surface here in this episode. Yeah. So uh, that's pretty much it for, for this week. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, we'll be back next week f- uh, with a brand new episode. Thank you. Have a good week. Thanks, guys. See you.